Okay, uh, this video is example number six that we have prepared um, concerning combination problems that involve repeats and we want to solve the problem using uh, generating functions. And here the problem states this. Find the number of ways that four persons, each rolling a single die, can have a total of 17. So we're going to approach the problem as we've done in the previous videos. And there's a lot of manipulations that we have to do with the numbers. So we're probably going to end up splitting the video into two different parts. By the way, if you just um, found us on YouTube, if you will go to the website digital-university.org, all, all the videos that we have concerning combinations and permutations and the work that we've done with generating functions so far. They're all listed there for you in their proper order. Okay, for this one, for this problem, what we want to do is exactly the same thing that we've done in the past videos, and that is when you roll a single die, what's a generating function that can describe the various outcomes? And of course, the outcomes are, when you throw a single die, a face might turn up that has only one dot, or two dots, or three, or four, or five, or a maximum of six dots. So the generating function is very simple, x to the first plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth, plus x to the fifth, plus x to the sixth. And it stops there. Now, in some of our previous videos, when we were writing out the generating function, we said that it could go out to an, form an infinite series. But it does not do that in this case, because we have a natural built-in restriction. And that restriction is the most number of dots that can turn up at any one time is 6. Also, um, with some of our previous videos, when we were writing down the generating function, it did not start with x, but it started with 1. Of course, 1 corresponds to x to the 0 exponent. And in this case, that would mean that a face turns up that has 0 dots. And of course, that doesn't happen. So the generating function starts with x. And in this case, it's a finite series. It is not, a, it is not an infinite series. So when we take a single die and we roll it, this is the generating function that describes what happens except we're not going to do it just once, we're going to do it four times. So the grand um, generating function, if you will, is the generating function that occurs each time multiplied together by itself. So in this case, that's just going to be this raised to the fourth power. And then when we do that, when we multiply this out four times, what we're interested in is what will be the coefficient of x to the 17th. Because this represents now the situation where 17 dots appear over the, over the total of four rows of the dice. And that coefficient on it will tell us the number of different ways that that can happen. Now, this problem is simple enough that we could just multiply this together four times and then look for x to the 17th and see what the coefficient is. But suppose that we we're working with a problem where maybe this was raised to the 63rd power. Clearly, you don't want to multiply this together 63 times. It'd be tedious enough to have you do it four times. So the way that we handle the manipulations is like this. First, notice we can factor an x out of here. And that will give us x times 1 plus x squared plus x cubed 
plus x to the fourth plus x to the fifth. And this whole thing is raised to the fourth power. OK, now we said we were interested in determining what is the coefficient of x to the 17th. Well, here we factored x to the fourth out. So now what we're interested in is determining, try to get this in better focus, in this expression, what is the coefficient of x to the 13th? Since this was already factored out. OK, and again, we could multiply this together four times, but if you have a very large exponent, um, that's not going to be realistic. So the way we handle this, and I think we've already done this in one of the previous videos, we have to recall that 1 over 1 minus x is equal to an infinite series, and that infinite series is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. We're writing all of these out here now for a purpose. So let's just put a few more terms in. And this goes on the way, all the way on out to infinity. Now, it gets interesting because what happens if we multiply both sides of this equation by 1 minus x to the sixth? So we multiply this side by that. So here we'll have 1 minus x to the sixth. Now I have to multiply this side by 1 minus x to the sixth, this whole infinite series. And let's just get rid of this for now. 1 minus x to the sixth. So multiply this times 1 minus x to the sixth. Multiply it by 1, that gives all these terms again. So let's just write them all out. We have 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth x to the fifth sixth, seventh, and so forth, all out to infinity. All right, now we multiply by minus x to the sixth. Minus x to the sixth times 1 is minus x to the sixth. Minus x to the sixth times x is minus x to the seventh. So you can see what happens once we start multiplying by minus x to the sixth, all of these terms all cancel each other out, and we're left with this finite sequence. And that is what this is. So this, 1 minus x to the sixth, divided by 1 minus x, equals this, except it's raised to the fourth power. So we have to raise this to the fourth power. And remember, when we do that, we're interested in finding the coefficient of x to the 13th. This has already been factored out for us. So let's just try to rewrite this and make it a little bit neater. We have 1 minus x to the 6th divided by 1 minus x. one minus x to the sixth divided by one minus x, and that's raised to the fourth power. OK, and in this expression, we want to determine the coefficient of x to the 13th. Let's just write this over here. That's what we need to know. OK, and we can write this as this equals 1 minus x to the sixth to the fourth power times 
1 minus x to the negative 4. Now, here's where we use our knowledge of binomial expansions, both for positive exponents and negative exponents. Uh, we've done that in the previous videos, but our goal is this. Multiply these together. Now, we're not interested in what is the whole expression when we multiply all that together. We're only interested in one part of that expression, and that is what's the coefficient of x to the 13th. So we'll keep that in mind when we start writing these out. But what is this equal to? Well, remember from our work with uh, uh, binomial expansions that we did in the previous videos, this we can write very simply as a finite sequence, i equals 0 to 4 minus 1 to the i. We write our, I'm used to writing the binomial coefficients like this, times x to the sixth to the i power. This is this, and it's a finite sequence. This is an infinite series. i equals zero to infinity. And then for this one, the binomial coefficient is going to be 3 plus i x to the i. And how we got that, we've covered this in, in previous videos. All of the terms here in this infinite series, they're all positive terms. Okay, now what we're interested in is when we take an x from here and multiply it with an x from here, we want these two exponents to add up to 13. All the other terms we're not concerned with at all. So let's keep that in mind. And let's see, for this one, let's write out what some of the terms are. So we start off with i is equal to 0. So I'm going to have c for 0. And of course, that's just x to the 0, which is 1. Then we have i equals 1, so that's going to be minus c for 1. x to the sixth, i equals 2, so that will be positive, c for 2, that gives us x to the twelfth. Now, notice what the next term is. Now, i will equal 3. Here we have x to the eighteenth. We're only interested in the coefficient of x to the thirteenth. So I'm going to bother to write that down. Because when I multiply that by any other x, it's going to give us an x to an even higher number. We're not interested in that. So I'm not going to bother to write down all the terms from here. These are the only ones that are going to be of interest to us. And we're going to multiply these by x's from this expression. And again, what we want is we only care about x to the 13th. All the other terms we could care less about. And notice that this is 1. That binomial coefficient, that's 4. And this binomial coefficient, that's 6. OK, now I'm going to multiply these x's by x's from this expression. Well. I have an infinite number of them, but I only care about situations where I multiply this x times whatever x's are in this expression to give me x to the 13th. So let's start with here. I have x to the 12th. I only want to, if I multiply this by x to the 1st, that gives me x to the 13th. So in that case, i equals 1. So we're going to have times x i equals 1, that's c for 1. 
So this times this gives me x to the 13th. And again, all these terms here are positive. All right, let's look at this one. I have an x to the 6th. If I multiply by x to the 7th, that's going to give me x to the 13th. So here we have x to the 7th. This is the binomial coefficient c, 7, 10. This one I had to multiply by x to the 13th. And that binomial coefficient is going to be c, that's 13, and that's 16. So again, when we multiply these here, this is going to give us then x to the 13th. I'm multiplying this, I'm multiplying this, and I'm multiplying this. Those are the situations that when we do the multiplication, it generates an x to the 13th. Then what you want to do is go ahead and determine what that coefficient is. And that's going to involve just a little bit more manipulations. Um, we're almost there, but we want to take a chance and run out of time. So we're going to stop the video right now, but come back and join us for the second uh, part of the video, and we'll finish off what these computations are, and then we'll see what our answer is. So come back, join us for the next video, and we'll continue from here.